So Neil, it's been almost two weeks since the whole scandal broke in the national news. Just how have you reflected on that period of time now? I think just the sheer madness of what I did. Um, I apologise again for doing it. Um, I am now sort of with my wife um, picking up the pieces um, and I really wanted to sort of talk to you today really to, to thank everybody for the great support I've had in this constituency and, and how much of an honour it has been to represent Tiverton and Honington for 12 years. Just what highlights have there been over the 12 years of your life as a Member of Parliament for this area? Well I suppose one of the highlights has been you know, finally to get Columpton Railway Station um, going when I thought you know, a long time it, it would probably never happen there's still the fight over to get to Tiverton High School and I wish my successor all the very best to try and get that you know bypasses in Columpton and Axminster and community hospitals at Seaton, Axminster, Honiton and, and, and Tiverton you know we need to make sure that all these facilities are maintained and I shall look forward to to watch what happens in the future because you know I have worked very hard to, uh, in this constituency and I've had very great support um, from councillors, from activists and just from parish councils, all sorts of people have really supported me and I've enjoyed it and of course I've also um, had a great deal of support from the farming community which I have represented extremely well in Parliament though I say it myself as Chair of the Environment Food Real Fairs Select Committee. What would you like to see from our next Member of Parliament, whatever colour they are, whatever way the election goes, what would be your message to them and what do you hope they'll fight for? A new school for Tiverton is the top priority uh, and then like I said we need these bypasses and others but uh, if there was one thing I would say um, to my own party, um, a new school for Tiverton is really necessary. It would do the town you know, a great deal of good um, and it would really help sort of raise aspirations in Tiverton Everton because they're great people um, but we need better education um, and we need more aspiration and, and on that I think would be really good. Talking about your own party there are stories in the national press today about you potentially standing as an independent at the forthcoming by-election. What's, what's that about? What's the, uh, what's the news there? Well, I think what I, you know, I'm, I'm just giving consideration to what I, what I want to see my own party do is make sure that they bring in, you know, a good local candidate which, which will not only be good in London in Parliament but also be good um, in uh, the constituency because being a constituency MP is is hard work and it should be. Uh, so I, I just don't want anybody foisted upon us. Um, but you know, I mean, I haven't made up my mind one way or the other. I'm still taking soundings. Um, and I think, um, you know, I, I don't want to upset all the people that have been so loyal to me in my own party. Uh, if I did stand, like I said, it wouldn't be for any other party. It would be an independent because, you know, part of me has always wanted to be independent. Um, and I've been quite an independent conservative. So, um, you know, people would know that. I think the trouble is, I, my, you know, my, my, if I was trading on the stock exchange now, I think my value would be quite low. And so because of my actions, and I apologize, again for them um, and that's why probably uh, I won't stand uh, but I don't rule anything out at this stage. You've obviously got a lot of fond memories of serving Tiverton and Honiton but what will you miss the most from not being a member of parliament? Well I think meeting people in the constituency and we, we've had some good fun over the years. Um, I remember you sort of photographed me uh, quite a large Neil Parish going down a water slide if I remember rightly. Um, all sorts of things. I've, I've never been a pompous MP. I've always got you know rolled up my sleeves and, and we've had lots of, of good fun and I shall miss the camaraderie. Um, but you know to, you, it, you know I am of you know I am coming up to retirement age. I've probably retired a little sooner than I was expecting but but you know there I have to build that up but I really did enjoy this and of course I enjoyed Parliament I enjoyed particularly uh, chairing the select committee to do with the environment and food food is a, a public good I shall go on saying that to the last day I die so you know those are the things that I shall miss most miss my colleagues in Parliament again we had plenty of banter um, and of course the ridiculous part with me is that I have blotted my copybook so terribly uh, but actually behaved very well in Parliament generally Generally. So, because um, I am sure the national press were doing their best to find somebody to have a story on me, but I don't think they could find them. On that subject of the national press, just what is it like to be such focus of 
that kind of thing happening? I suppose I shall have nightmares for the rest of my life because, um, by God, is it something to... to and um, for all my faults and for all my sins, um, I think, you know, I managed to hold um, on to my temper, hold on to... because I had made the mistake, uh, but my goodness me, those are like nobody else you've ever come across. Um, they've got a job to do, um, but uh, I think, you know, it, it's pretty harsh. Uh, but, you know, you are in politics, uh, you put your head above the parapet, you make a mistake, you pay the price. What next for Neil Parrish? What is the future hold for you and your family and the family farm? I intend to build up some more farming and, and probably look at, maybe look at one or two other little business projects. Um, and that's very much in my own gift so that I can go on and do those. Um, but I would still like to, to, the knowledge that I've gained, especially in the, in the food, farming, environmental side, um, I really do need to use that. I also like something like Farm Crisis Network, uh, charities we've just been finishing, you know, when I was previously uh, the chair of the select committee an inquiry in the middle of on on um, uh, on mental health of farmers and, and I have to say and I'd like the, you to put this on record that it was the farm uh, community network that actually rang me on on Sunday evening to check how I was in the in the you know in when the when the heat was there and I, I very much um, you know thank them for that because um, one is not at one's best place at that time and I think what I would say to my national party is is that whatever mistakes an MP makes um, you do really need to try and give them a little bit of help uh, in a time of crisis not just leave them to it um, and um, you know I drove to Plymouth and it was all fine but uh, to do my resignation with Martin Oates uh, but you know it, it could have been it could have been very different and I, I'm not saying I would do anything stupid because uh, I'm not like that but I, th I think um, they do need to care for you a little better in a moment of crisis not oh well you're a very hot potato uh, so just disappear finally we've got a by-election coming up campaigning is well underway what's your message to those people who are going out to vote in this upcoming by-election which is obviously going to be thrust into the national spotlight I am still a member of the Conservative Party. I hope to remain that. Um, and I think, you know, just be very careful. Uh, look at the candidates. All being well, we will put up a good local candidate, the Conservative Party, and I would ask them to give that due consideration and hopefully they can still vote Conservative. Um, I have represented them well in the past and I hope the new representative from the Conservative Party will do the same.